My name is Shia Luo. I am a developer evangelist at Autodesk. Uh, I've been with them for about eight months now, and uh, this is my first job out of college. The entire company has been trying to move around uh, the cloud space. It's a, <laughs> traditionally, it's a software company, but uh, we're trying to make all our products available online as well. So we're starting with the view and data API that I'm going to talk about today. Uh, we're also opening up, opening up APIs for uh, Fusion 360, where you could, you could just edit uh, your 3D models uh, on the website. So design engineering tools are different for everybody. I mean, um, everybody is a different tool. Before, uh, computer-aided design is really just for a replacement uh, for pen and paper. And, uh, and that has evolved for many years. So now it has become a different tool for everybody. And it requires some sort of uh, authoring kind of domain knowledge. Um, and it's a, for example, it's Photoshop or Illustrator for visual and graphic designers. It's AutoCAD for interior designers. It's Rhino SolidWorks or Fusion or Inventor for industrial designers. Uh, it's Revit for architect, architects. And uh, well, I came from an electrical engineering background as well, and we use different kind of uh, a, a CAD tool for, for uh, circuit designs. Uh, and uh, we use uh, like current uh, values, like uh, how, how much current can this wire take, some that kind of knowledge that just would be different from anybody else. And these tools require really detailed domain knowledge. Um, so uh, if you're designing a, the user interface of an app, you're designing furniture, you're designing electronics, railways, buildings, whatever, it's going to be a different tool for everybody. And it, it's very complicated functionality. And the softwares are very big, expensive, and complex to master. So you know, I come from Autodesk, right? You know how expensive our software is. It's um, AutoCAD 2015 was like two thousand dollars, so it's not really affordable for everybody. But for every one author of these kind of design, it, it, there are ten to fifteen consumers of the data. If you know, one person designs this uh, building, there's ten to fifteen shareholders or stakeholders that needs access to this information. So traditionally, what happened is that the designer will make up the design, they send it over to the client, and the client needs to download that big, expensive software to view the file, just to view the file. And, so the, and the outputs are very proprietary formats. And you, know, and, uh, it's, uh, you get these kind of STO or OBJ for that, that are kind of generic, but it's still different for, for everybody. And you, you still need a very specific software to open the file. So you have generic formats. Or you render it into an image. If you design a, a building, you can, render the, you, can, you can render the look of the building. You can get the floor plan. However, you could have just drawn the floor plan and not designed the building with the software. So what's the point? So the problem with generic formats is that they're extremely lossy. They lose metadata like quantity, width, and height. And if you render the image, it's 3D into 2D. You could have drawn it. So Autodesk has been trying to solve this problem for years. You know, we have a suite of about 30 different softwares for different things. There's one for buildings. There's one for mechanical design. There's the one for you know, city design. And uh, we've all trying to export, import them into our other softwares. And it has all kind of failed. And uh, we really think that this time we're going to get it. <laughs> and uh, it's, uh, it's with a technology called WebGL. So um, the WebGL is derived from OpenGL. Uh, it stands for Web Graphical Library. It's a JavaScript API that lets browser, browsers render 3D. So it basically pulls from your graphics uh, engine from your computer. It's not a W3C standard yet. But right now, every browser supports it. So if you're not in the space, um, um, it's, it's really been catching up lately. Uh, IE have just you know, started to pick up the, uh, the support uh, sometime last year. And it's a difficult technology to master. You know, it's, it's new. Uh, it's like OpenGL. So basically, what you're doing software-wise is to draw the 3D uh, objects and meshes uh, using code, uh, basically like mathematical formulas. 
So what all of this it did is that we came out with a 3D, 2D viewer API where you can call, you upload your CAD file using uh, some REST APIs, and you view it on the browser using a set of JavaScript APIs. And it just came out sometime last year, so it's, uh, and it's in beta, so it's free. <laughs> so here's the demo. Um, the reason that I'm using these slides in uh, a browser is that this is basically an iframe embed of this 3D model. And you, know, you can do whatever you do in a software with it. You can, this is a, this is a car, so what I wanna do is I wanna look at every part in that car, so I could explode the model and comes apart. And to click on it, you get all the detailed designs of each different parts. So basically just takes in your CAD model and uh, puts it on the browser. And performance is really good. So whatever you want to do, you know, whatever you can do on the computer, on, on the regular standalone software, you'll be able to do it here, uh, viewing-wise. So, uh, but also, this is just viewing. The true value of this technology, you know, since it's from Autodesk, it's not that we have a WebGL on the browser. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of people that are passionate about WebGL. Um, but also, it takes in about 50 different kind of CAD formats, not just ours, but uh, most other uh, major formats, and you know, display all the interesting data associated with the graphics. So I'll, I'll show you what I mean by the next slide. So I have a demo about data. Oh, I already have it here. So, okay. so this is a Revit model. It's a, it's a building design. So I have, uh, I have two views here. One is the 3D view and one is the 2D view. And by clicking on an object in 2D, I isolate it out on the 3D. And I could also figure out what, what, type of, uh, what type of material or what, what type of ob objects there are in this model. So if I go by. Uh, yes, if, if you export into Revit, and so, so, the, so the process is that uh, we translate that into Revit, and then, and then you will be able to, uh, so if, if it shows up in Revit, it will, be, you know, it will show up here. So, um, and, okay, can I do search? Okay, so there are properties of this, uh, this model as well. So we have stairs. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, no, it's okay. But um, I could get all the I could get all the reports for this building. Um, let's see, model structure. So if I search for uh, a rail, it will show it will show me all the rails in that design. Can you append mm -hmm. that? Um, right now, it only takes in generic metadata. So um, uh, the, the the reason being is that it's been it's supporting so many different formats. It's uh, it's uh, you really, it really just taking whatever uh, Revit like the generic. The data? Oh, depend on this viewer. Yes, you can. It's uh, a bit difficult. It's more it's easier to do it on in your actual software than than here. Um, Okay, um, there's another example that I wanted to show. For example, um, Arian. It, this, is a, this is a chair by Herman Miller. It's a very expensive chair, if you didn't know. <laughs> it's about the same price as our products. <laughs> so um, to, to, you know, when, when you're trying to buy this uh, chair, what you do is you, know, you, you wanna look at it and you wanna see how it looks like. So ba basically what people would do is you know, go to images if there's, if it's loading, no. Nah. Okay. But you get the idea. You, you have all these images of this same chair. They, it's all either really good you know, photography or it's uh, 3D rendering. 
and, and you can kind of see how the chair looks like. And with Herman Miller, they also have 3D model for you to download. You could download it on your computer and then open it up in that $2,000 piece of software. But what else you can do is we, we have built this application on top of the API that we, we provided. So I download it. And then you agree to the terms and conditions. <laughs> it, it will upload the model, translate it into, it a, becomes a bunch of JSON string, strings that gets read into, um, to become WebGL, by WebGL. And then it will render it on the browser, in the browser. Sorry. So I drop it in. So this is how the chair looks like. And it's, you can all do it in the browser. OK. Do you want to This is, we built this really for viewing uh, at first. Uh, editing is not, is not a priority right now. And uh, I don't think there's any more plans for that. Um, but it's really for consumer of the data. So you could send this link um, of, uh, of this model to anybody, and they'll be able to real time look at it. And, and that's really the value of this is, you know, you, you're, not, you're not just using it to author it. You're, using it, you're showing it to anybody that you want. Um, uh, there are quite a bit of different functionalities now. For example, there's sectioning. So with this model, this is a Revit model, so what you can do, you can section the model and then just take a screenshot of this and that would be a floor plan. But you know, you can just let people play with it. Um, okay, cool. And of course, there are properties associated with all, all the objects and the model tree. So, so clicking on any of these would give you that, that particular object. Okay, cool. So the demo web app is what I showed you that you drag and drop. So, so that's all the demos that I have. Um, so basically the bottom line is that digital designs should be available on the web. It's not just something that you download and open it up in certain computer at work or a software. And uh, at Autodesk, we're trying to solve this uh, interoperability issue that has been haunting us, uh, this design world, for years. And um, that's mostly what I wanted to say. And uh, tweet at me, and I'll post all the, all the uh, slides online later tonight.